this technology thing is takes a little bit of extra um, stuff. sideways again on Facebook or not, um, if you happen to see it, uh, kind of listing to one side, welcome you this morning as we enter into holy conversation with God by our worship. It is good to see so many of you here this morning. Um, are there any announcements or concerns from the pews for the good of the order? Deborah Wright has been in our prayers for the last few weeks, um, and uh, then did die this last last Sunday. Uh, she is a, a member of, of uh, the Church of North Harmony Way, um, and been known to a lot of the women of the ELCA. Uh, so we keep her family in our prayers. Many of you may have seen the article about Nico Salio in the newspaper this last week. Um, he continues to do well. Our 11-year-old who had a, a um, heart transplant this uh, last a little more than a week ago. Um, he's doing well. His mother has been discharged from her stay at the hospital and was able to see him this week as well. So we do keep, continue to keep Stacy and Nico, of course, in our prayers. Let us take this well. We've heard the phrase, so we will begin our worship. Now I will continue to ask you to remain seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord have our mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who would offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend 
You have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the 25th chapter of Isaiah. O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed to old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city of a, a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from their faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the 23rd Psalm responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The, the Lord, Lord makes me lie down in the green pastures, and leads me beside the still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord. You guide me along my pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall be with you, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the fourth chapter of Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Synthich to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask also that you, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything be prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just 
playing hungry. Yet while the wedding hall is filled, teeming with people, the good and the bad, the king, is there a in the on and just one of this poor fellow? Probably stuck out like a sore thumb. Today, if we were invited to a fancy dress ball, or just a fancy party, or a wedding, and we spot this one, we will either take pity and consider that he's just too poor to afford the fancy clothes, or doesn't know any better, perhaps. Maybe we'll even admire him as that local eccentric that everyone knows. But here in this gospel, the king makes a public spectacle of him, and has him bound hand and foot, throws him out in the streets to rot, really throws him into hell. What do we make of all this? This third in a series of parables from these last three weeks, shocking and violent. The third in a series in which Jesus, or at least the writer of Matthew, is clearly had it with religious leaders. The king destroys the city. It's largely thought by scholars that the destruction of the city is related to the destruction of the temple by the Romans, which the writer of this gospel has witnessed in his lifetime. What do we make of it? What do we make of this as church? We could speak of the trials that we face these days. We could talk about what some say about some leaders in this country that they want to destroy the church, religion. But that is political claptrap. So it would be disingenuous of me to speak of it. We might even speak of what the global pandemic is doing to the church, but if we speak of that, if we speak of that, we must speak about the church, how she has reached out beyond the walls of her buildings, extending the invitation to worship, to hear the word spoken and proclaimed to a far, far wider group of people than it ever has done. I believe what we must speak about is God's invitation. It is an invitation that does not stop with the leaders, the rich, the landowners who turn out to be unworthy. He keeps inviting. And again, and again, ultimately inviting all to come, all to come and honor God through his Son, Christ Jesus. It is an invitation that goes out to all, no matter the class or race. It is an invitation that is extended to the rich and to the poor, to the good and to the bad, to the sweet and to the sour, to those who smell sweet and to those who smell not so nice. The invitation knows no bounds. And yet, It appears from this gospel lesson that the invitation comes with an ask. It comes with the ask that we dress in the white robe. That we come dressed to honor the King, our God, His Son, our Christ. Martin Luther is quoted as saying, God does not need your good works, but your anger does. Perhaps the ask of the man who comes dressed in shabby clothes, 
who dishonors the king and his son is to have some modicum of fear of the Lord. And fear of the Lord is something that we interpret here most often as awesome reverence. So, we not only bow before the Lord, kneel at the name of Jesus, but we respond to that love that is poured out for us. We don't simply show up for a meal. We don't simply acknowledge that we have faith and, faith and trust that that is all it takes, even though that is true. God has given to us a son, Emmanuel, God with us. And Christ has given us, that Son has given to us the gift of making us his bride. The bride of Christ. It is his church. And we, the church, the people of faith, are the body of Christ for this world. Luther wrote this in his introduction to Romans. Saving faith is a living, creative, active, and powerful thing. Faith cannot help doing good works constantly. It doesn't stop to ask if works, good works, ought to be done, but before anyone asks, it already has done them and continues to do them without ceasing. Anyone who does not do good works in this manner is an unbeliever. Thus, it is impossible to separate faith and works as it is to separate heat and light from fire. I'm glad to see so many have showed up this morning. But we do not just show up. We have entered into a sacred relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We are his betrothed in the midst of a world in turmoil. In a time when perhaps more than any other, there are he people who need to know God's grace, love, and mercy. And so, what does that mean for you? What does that mean for us, this congregation of Zion's Evangelical Lutheran Church, here from the corner of South Pennsylvania Avenue and West 2nd Streets? What does that mean for us as the bride of Christ, the body of Christ for the world today?
Together with the whole church, we confess on our faith the faith in which we are baptized. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of all the heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to heaven. On the third day, he was he is ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our Amen. The praise of the Holy of God in Christ Jesus and for all people, according to their needs. We pray for your church and all who lead her, for our bishops Elizabeth and Kurt, for the pastors and deacons of our synod, for this holy gathering, for all your disciples. Give us strength as we struggle to do your will in this world. Glory in your mercy. We are our prayer. As I am, this community in faith. For those who find themselves unable to be with us this morning, that they may know we count them among us. Guide us with your truth. Fill us with your love. And provide for us from your bounty. Glory in your mercy. We are our prayer. For our President Donald and for his help. For all who are elected to lead this nation, for candidates running for public office, and for mercy, justice, and peace among all peoples, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who continue to suffer in the face of wildfires and hurricane, drought and food deserts, for good weather, abundant fruits of the earth, and peaceful times, Lord, in your mercy, we are for the city in which you have placed us and for those who live in it, for our surrounding communities, for our families, our companions, and all those we love. May we continue to share the good news by loving all our neighbors, Lord, in your mercy. We are our for all those in danger and need, the sick and the suffering, prisoners, captives, and their families, the hungry, the homeless, and the oppressed, and for those who grieve, for Arthur, Kim, Jen, Nico, Ty, Mark, Doris, Pete, Jeannie, Dolores, Luther, Earl, Donna, April, Eileen and Mom, Cindy, Nico, Chris, Chloe Marie, Laura, the residents of the Westmoreland Manor, the residents of the King facility, for all those suffering loss, illness, or separation in the wake of the pandemic, for the family of Deborah Wright, and for those we name in our hearts for love and for you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing or other personal care assistance in this community, for those who make little dresses for Africa, for those who knit prayer shawls. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our for those who rest in Christ and for all the departed. As we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, the King of heaven, you wipe away every tear. Hear the prayers we offer this day and clothe us in robes of white.
life for the wedding banquet of your Son, through whom we pray, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. And in these times we share that sign of peace by opening our arms and acknowledging our neighbors. Encouraged by our Lord's teaching, we are bold and pray. Our God, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord and our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Send your spirit of truth, O God, to kindle your gifts within us, renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.